Hey folks, let's cover some of the new CSS grid utilities added to version 1.9 of Tailwind CSS. Up to version 1.8, when working with grids, you'd have to specify the number of rows or columns an element should span across if you wanted it to be anything else than one. I'll quickly add a teal border to one of the elements here so we have a visual reference for this demo. So if you had a grid with two columns and wanted to have an element spanning across one full row, you would need to give it a class of call span two. Now, if at a different breakpoint, you wanted to redefine the grid to have three columns, you would need to change that element to call span three. So it would keep spanning across the whole row at any breakpoint. This changes in Tailwind CSS version 1.9. When you want to have an element span across a full row of your grid, you can use the call span full utility. This will make your element always cover the full width of its current row, starting at the very first grid line and going all the way to the very last. The same happens with grid columns when using the row span full utility. Okay, I'll remove the row span full class now and also remove the three column definition at the large breakpoint. If I comment out the last four elements for a second, and pull up the grid dev tools, you can see we have a grid that explicitly defines two columns and three rows ready to welcome content. This happens because we have applied the grid calls two and grid rows three utilities to our grid here. If I change grid rows three to grid rows two, you can see we now only have two rows in our defined grid. So we have two grid cells available and now we're going to bring back our content which consists of four elements. We can see that the first two elements have filled our defined grid and the other two were added below. You might be able to see this hard line here, which shows the limit between our defined grid, which is also known as the explicit grid and the additional cells for which the explicit grid did not have enough space. For those, CSS grid generated what's called an implicit grid, which behaves a bit differently to our explicit grid. Right here, for example, you can see that the height in our implicit row is not the same as the rows within the explicit grid. Now, let's change the flow order of our grid by adding the grid flow call class to our grid container. This will make children elements populate the grid column by column instead of row by row. Now, our grid is populated in that order. One, two, three, four and the last two elements get added inside an implicit column outside of the explicit grid. Again, you can notice that the implicit column behaves differently and has a different width. This is where Tailwind's new auto calls and auto rows utilities come handy. They allow you to influence how implicit columns and rows get sized in your grid. On the grid parent, I will apply the auto calls min class. As you can see, this will set the width of the column to min content which is the minimal amount of space any piece of content within that column will take. Let's look at our grid, and you can see the implicit column got much narrower. In our case, the minimal amount of space needed by the content is defined by the longest word in the column, development. If I add a super long word here without any spaces, the column width is now adjusted to the new min content width defined by that word. Auto calls max does the opposite. It takes away real estate from the explicit grid and sets the width of the implicit column to the widest piece of content, in our case, this paragraph element here. If you want the implicit column to occupy the same space as the explicit columns, you can use auto calls fr, which will make it occupy up to one fraction of the available space, just like the explicit columns do. The same adjustments can be made on implicit rows with the auto rows utilities. For example, let's remove the grid flow call utility to go back to the default row by row content flow. And now we can take this implicit row and make it share the same amount of space as the explicit rows with auto rows fr. 